this NFL division recap and MLK Day NBA Picks Edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Sign up using our link and receive a five hundred dollar risk free bet. That's right, five hundred dollars. And if you send in your first bet slip, you'll get a free T shirt. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win for a five hundred dollar risk free bet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N. We're also brought to you by Better Than Vegas. Better Than Vegas is the home for avid sports betters, providing insights, analysis, and free betting picks. Better Than Vegas, it's like YouTube for sports betting. Make sure to subscribe to our page so you don't miss a pick. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. We're also brought to you by Better Edge. Better Edge is a stock exchange for sports bets, allowing you to buy and sell betting positions like a stock market. The best part is, it allows you to bet with no VIG. That's right, no vig betting that's legal in 40 states. Sign up at betteredge.com, promo code SGP for a free $10 bet. That's B E T T O R edge.com, promo code S G P. Finally, we're brought to you by Ace Per Head. Ace is the leader in pay pred providers, and they make it super easy to start your own sports book. Plus, Ace is offering up to six weeks free over at aceperhead.com slash S G P. That's aceperhead.com slash S G P. Ooh, welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. It's happening, Kramer Dog. Oh, what a what a divisional Sunday. Better for you than me. The weekend great all around. Could Sorry, change. Ryan. Can't hear you. The cash oh, register tow, is just tow, going tow. off. Four and zero, oh, and that includes uh money line dog bucks. <laughs> But again, clean sweep on Saturday, clean sweep on Sunday. Could have done better with some of the props, but again, you know, my specialty, Ryan, is always has been winning NFL sides, not totals. Uh, yeah, I, I dabble with the props, but again, my uh, if you looked at my character profile as a handicapper, it would say style, gut handicapping, specialty, NFL sides. Four and oh with the money line dog in there. Jesus Christ, uh, that pays you out a ton if you parlayed them together. Sean, please tell me you parlayed them. Um, I may or may not. Have, oh right? no, <laughs> the confidence was down. I was the scarred. Owens. I was scarred from the zero and six. The yeah. ultimate bounce back. Zero and six to to four and zero. Oh. Well, I did throw out that I would go seven and zero. Oh, the remainder seven oh. NFL playoff games. More than halfway did, there, Ryan. Play the Rocky music. I don't have the oh, Rocky music right no. now. No, that's good. Mike Evans first touchdown score. Alex Rodriguez point out we, we uh, one of the listeners did throw that out there in the pregame show. Of it, course, it was discussed. This episode presented by Win Bet. If you're in Jersey, if you're in Colorado, if you are a DJ, help us out. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com/slash wynn and help yourself out. Help yourself out. Sign up using those links. If you're in Jersey, click the Jersey app. Colorado, click the click the Colorado app. And you will qualify for a five hundred dollar risk free bet. If that's not enough, send in your screenshot of your first bet, and you will get a free T shirt. Email that screenshot in podcast at sportsgamblingpodcast dot com. Podcast at sportsgamblingpodcast dot com for the screenshot. Sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash win w y n n. Kramer, what a uh, what a weekend. <laughs> well, you know, it, we were always going to be more into the games on Saturday. Well, the Packers have been a team that we've kind of been on lately. The Bills, of course, Bills Mafia, part of the yes. SGPN family. So riding high off of that, I kind of was waiting for the one, you know, the other shoe to to fall. Uh, when the Browns actually came in, I was like, oh man, like that was that was super public. You know, that obviously was definitely- the Bucks are getting the money. The line moved to two and a half. If the Bucks come in, it's going to be a good day for for the common man. And uh, Sean, you are amongst the common man. You had a good day. Got to the window twice. I like what you're you're trying to neg me there with your I'm, common man talk, Ryan. <laughs> I don't mean it to be a neg. But much I'm, like Merrill Hodge, so, hashtag be uncommon. Going four and zero against the spread in the NFL playoffs. Kind win, of an uncommon feat. Winners win, Sean. Winners That's all win. You gotta say shoot right. or shoot and winners win. Let's get through the recap here, and we're gonna go through each game. Then we're gonna hop on the line with uh, Zach B, contributor and uh, co-host over there at the NBA Gambling Podcast. Gonna talk a little uh, Harden trade, maybe some Knicks talk. Give out some uh, picks for MLK Day for uh, 
gambling against the spread. That's what we do here. <laughs> I mean, we got to start stretching our uh, other muscles, our other sport muscles, because while the FCS will be fun, yes, I, I, will it fill the entire void? Well, and, and, and I imagine we're going to be doing a weekly college basketball podcast. I could see us doing that with Colby. Weekly college football, and then uh, do, talking That's some what NBA. I'm saying. You gotta stretch. You know, you gotta you gotta stretch them out. You gotta get get get. You gotta get loose before you get into midseason form, Sean. And of course, we are live again. Perfect reason to subscribe. YouTube.com/slash Sports Gambling Podcast for uh, you can interact. But really, if you want to hop on the line, if you want to talk to us, download the Locker Room app, join our yeah. room, and just hit request to talk. You can get the link over at SportsGamblingPodcast.com. And uh, sounds like we already got our first caller, Kramer. Let's bring him on, uh, Zach. Welcome, welcome to the show. How'd you do today? Hey, boys! Thanks for having me on. Cheers. Thanks for calling in, Zach. How how was your uh, divisional round weekend, Sean? I gotta tell you, man, what a weekend! I, like for for you, man. Like <laughs> last weekend was just so bad, <laughs> such bad beats. Yep. And this weekend, let. It ride, baby! <laughs> Hell, fucking yeah! Well, hopefully, hopefully you are on the same side of those. How'd you do? Four for four, man. You know, I I, I kind of tweeted at you today. I had I had a sweat going on. I had uh, money line parlay with the Bucks to go, and then I had a teaser with the Bucks at seven and a half. And uh, I, I tell you what, first quarter there, I was a little worried. A little white knuckle in it. I, you know what, and 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 you you boys will be proud. I almost hedged it, but as we do on SGP, you let it ride. That's Hell right. yeah! Hell there. yeah! Any uh, any early leans for the uh, conference championship games? You know what? I I'm having kind of the look ahead. I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Pat Mahomes. Is he going to be a hundred percent? Is he even going to be playing? Um, but right now, you know, I the Bills have been really good. I'm I'm leaning I'm leaning Packers in the in the NFC and Bills with the upset in the AFC for a sick Super Bowl coming up in well, a couple of weeks. And Zach, what part of Canada are you from? Because I, I definitely ju- just outside of Toronto, man. Awesome. Well, that that's Bills country like up Club there. Super sex is that? Yeah. I'm a Dolphin. That's fan, Montreal. Like, oh, you oh, are? No. Well, so I'm a little I'm a little heartbroken, uh, but I, I got over it from a couple of weeks ago. Now, as as a Dolphins fan, do you think? The uh, the Dolphins should try and trade for Deshaun Watson. Now maybe they give uh, him number three pick back to the Texans and uh, Tua, and and maybe get Deshaun Watson. Would you be down for something like that? The, the the short answer to your question, Sean, is what team that needs a quarterback wouldn't take Deshaun Watson? It's a good good analysis. You're right, but but you know you got to look at it and say you know like the the last thing was they wanted five first round picks. I don't know what quarterback <laughs> other than Pat Mahomes is worth five first round picks. So. If he's going to squeeze the Texans, I think we definitely should be interested in it. All right. Well, thanks for calling in, Zach, and uh, congrats on the big weekend and best of luck for uh, the upcoming weekend. Cheers, boys. Thanks for having me on. Cheers. Cheers. So, yeah, Packers took care of business at home against the Rams 32 18. Uh, Packers covering the six and a half. We were both on the Packers. Ryan, you had it as your lock. No, nothing too shocking in this game. Donald struggled to stay out on the field. Don't be afraid to play the lock sound effect. Let's okay. ce- let's celebrate everyone's victory, Sean. Packers were the uh, first team in NFL playoff history to register 475 plus yards of total offense and 175 plus rushing yards with zero sacks allowed and zero turnovers in the game. It's just tough for me to imagine, and I'll wait till the line officially comes out and I do my research, but it's going to be <laughs> tough for me to imagine uh, not taking the Packers. So we're seeing the early lines at like minus four. I, no. I, and we talked about this. Yes. It's just, I mean, I, I think we're going to be on the public side with both of these. I think we both know where we're both going to put our money. And at four, we said this is a game we would bet up to seven uh, with the yeah, Packers. I mean, I, to me, I was like, it, if you want me to consider this game, you got to put this up to uh, seven and a hook. Yeah, we'll see though. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna trust the process. Do my research. <laughs> I'm seeing places that have the Bills catching three points. I'm ha- I'm seeing places that have uh, the Bills favored. So that Bills spread is gonna be all over the place against the Chiefs. Wow. That's gonna be tough. I mean, the 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 my co- cousin Mush sent sent a message uh, that basically 
Andy Reid said that uh, he passed all the tests. Mahomes yeah. passed all the tests. No, it, it's it's not going to be up to Andy Reid. No, no, obviously, but but if they're putting a line out there of minus three, yeah, that indicates that Mahomes is playing. I mean, they're not favored over the Bills with Chad Henney, are they? No, I don't. I don't so, think so. Uh, they're, we're that confident he's going to get through the protocol because if people, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be first to the window. Let me buy up some of that plus three because worst case I'm okay with plus three. Yeah. I mean, even if you're just completely hands off, I think you, I, I think there's probably some value in taking bills plus three. And then if the, I, I would say 25% chance, Chad Henney's the starter, then you're going to get, you're going to, there's an easily a situation where you get chiefs, Plus three and Bills plus three. Sean, when he got knocked down, he was knocked out. You saw his eyes open and you saw that kind of like fighter rigor mortis where like yeah. the arm stretched out, which means he was out. And, you know, I don't I don't know what kind of protocols they have. Uh obviously the the the, the independent neurologist today was looking for a little Browns plus 10 action, <laughs> but we gotta see how the, the guy who's gonna be able to clear him does because what we now have a full week. There is time, but I mean, man, if he's not in, I mean, we know Mahomes is worth eight points, right? We know we hey, he's got to be worth eight points. It, it, it'll be a big swing, anyway, at Sean. least to minus three and a half. Uh, McVeigh getting back to the Green Bay uh, oh. Rams game. McVeigh won't commit to golf moving <laughs> forward, which is just <laughs> awesome news for Jared Goff sucks island. I, I think this is the last boat out. And it's interesting uh, that he won't even commit to him as the starter. Very interesting times in Rams country. He understands how this works. I mean, McVeigh likes his job. He likes living in his LA. He likes training his dog and his pool and his hot wife and all those nice things. And they all go away potentially if he loses his job because he hitches to Jared Goff sucks Island. So you gotta you gotta act quick. And I, I I don't know what the contract situation is for Goff, but if you can get out, if we're past the point of like dealing with a lot of dead money. It might be time to move on. I mean, I'm sure their salary cap is pretty tight. They've brought in a lot of big, big price players, and, and so maybe you got to eat it. But don't, don't hitch to a guy who's not going to get you to the promised land. Sean, we got a, uh, we got uh, locker locker room super fan Jong on. Jong, uh, how'd you uh, how'd you do today, Jong? What a time to be alive, guys! <laughs> oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Well, you know uh, that's when you know you had a nice weekend. <laughs> oh, oh, and two on the props, though. Uh, yeah, Hooper that's sucked, all right. right? Hooper sucked, and Sanders. Sanders only went over because Michael Thomas got a bagel, right? And yeah, did man. not see that coming from uh, Michael Thomas. Just a complete no show. Didn't see the Traquan Smith angle going. I, yeah. I mean, that if you won the Millionaire Maker, I, I'm sure that guy had Traquan Smith in his lineup, and I I did not see that coming at all. No. On the bright side, uh, I did hit the uh, um, the Bucks money line pretty big on that one. So thanks to you guys, oh. um, I did hit the the Chiefs of uh, first half minus five five and a half. I believe Ooh, at nice. the time. So that that was uh, that was pretty easy. Um, uh, I and and uh, I hit on a couple of uh, teasers. Uh, the, there was a Packer teaser from yesterday that I um, hitched on with the the Bucks for today. So it was yeah, it pretty. Seemed, it seemed like pretty solid weekend overall for teasers as 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 long as you didn't put Baltimore in there because Baltimore was that that real teaser yeah. buster. And if you tease Kansas City, you were fine. If you tease Cleveland, you were fine. Buffalo, you were fine. Green Bay, you were fine. Rams, you would well, that would be twelve and a half. You just if you just, just barely missed that, but and if you just played Wong today. You were you were getting yeah. to the window. Yep. Well, I, I don't know. I, I keep I keep um, I didn't do the pleaser again because I didn't really see an avenue for the pleaser. Um, but I'm I'm hoping to hit a pleaser. I mean I've I've <laughs> I, went, I, I went to church today, but the pleaser gods lower G though. I, I'm not really. Well, I was I, I was thinking of putting in a pleaser today, and I'm glad I didn't because it, I would have pleased. Cleveland down oh. to like plus three or plus four, and they lost by five. So that, <laughs> that would have, would have been, been a brutal break on the, on the pleaser. So glad I didn't pull the trigger on that, but uh, glad to hear you had a good weekend at the books, John and uh, the I'm, man. You I'm guys are the man. Thank you. And I'm sure we'll be talking to you next weekend on the locker room app, taking your calls as we recap let it all ride. the NF, <laughs> let it ride. I love a, uh, that's a good, that's a great sign off for the uh, callers call in. Let us know. Maybe you want to shove someone in a locker. Maybe you had a bad beat. 
<laughs> I mean, Drew Brees needs to get. I mean, he. You know what? He doesn't need to be shoved. I think no. he's just gonna Come walk on, into one to show his kids that you can be anything you want to be. <laughs> you just have to put your mind to it. Uh, if that was his last game at home, boy, did he go out like a bitch. Well, went uh, out crying like a. B- <laughs> no I mean, one. I mean, with the exception of like Elway or. Every once in a while, I mean, even Peyton Manning, who went out winning the Super Bowl, that was pretty <laughs> underwhelming. Yeah. Uh, Peyton Manning performance. Uh, he's clearly lost the arm strength and uh, just trouble putting it down. He the- he lost the game. Yeah, I, he really it, did. He, he he actually lost the game. So all right, let's uh, keep getting through this recap. Buffalo Bills seventeen, Baltimore Ravens three. We both had the uh, Buffalo Bills minus two and a half. <laughs> Pretty uh, kind of an uglier game than we were expecting. The win definitely had a, had some impact there. Lamar Jackson has not thrown over 250 <laughs> yards in 16 straight games, and we've been kind of a Lamar hater. I, I just in this NFL that's a passing league, dude. You can't say that about him, man. It, it's just it's just tough to imagine MVP, a, a, a guy that can survive the quarterback position without. Being able to throw better, and and clearly this Buffalo team, we kind of hit it on in last night's uh, post game show, but they're just finding different ways to win, regardless of the avenue. They're figuring it out. Uh, Josh Allen, again, when in doubt, he just chucks it to Diggs, which is a great strategy. I mean, yeah, you just look at all the quarterbacks in the conference championship games, with the exception of Brady, who still has mostly zip on the ball. We'll see see how he does in the cold, but. It's it's my you know it's Mahomes it's Josh Allen it's Aaron Rodgers so uh, Lamar, you got to throw the ball you got to have an arm these guys have arms they win games with their arm um, you know I I wonder if, if Lamar has another year like this next year like at what point do you start talking about like maybe this is maybe this offense has hit its ceiling and that ceiling is a really good regular season team. That's gonna run into trouble in the postseason. Well, and Harbaugh before the season started, he said the next level of our offense is figuring out the deep ball, <laughs> throwing it, and they they didn't really make any progress no. on it as a team. They still have a very good defense, and and Lamar is still a very dynamic playmaker overall. But at, at some point, you gotta you gotta be able to throw the deep ball, and I mean, look at uh, look at all the quarterbacks, all the ones that are in the. Ca- you know, in this thing late are guys that can throw the deep ball. You just need those deep passes. Cause if you rely on dinking and dunking, like the Browns had to do uh, for a large part of the game, eventually the other side gets some big plays yeah. and, and you're in trouble. Want to give a shout out to better edge. Do you like betting without a vig? Yes. Yes. Do you live in one of the 40 States where better edge operates Yes. in the United States? Yes, I do. Good chance you did. 80% chance, although I would probably argue higher depending on what the population is and what exact states. They got uh, some weekly contests going. We did a uh, SGP divisional wager contest. That was only 10 bucks to enter. They give you a thousand edge coins and you can uh, spread them around. I, I may have won. I got to check the leaderboard, Ryan, because it's winner take all. And I th- and going four and oh, I can't imagine how I didn't pull that down. I love it. I may have accidentally put a uh, no. Browns money line bet in there. Oh, 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 dang. Again, best part about Better Edge, there is no VIG because there is no house. You're just buying other sports bettors' positions. Sign up today, betteredge.com. Use a promo code SGP for a free $10 bet. B E T T O R Edge.com. Promo code S G P. Cleveland Browns 17, Kansas City Chiefs 22. We were both on the Browns. Interesting game. Very interesting. I was going at it with someone on Twitter when I, you know, put <laughs> out the fact that we hit on the uh, Browns plus 10. Yeah, we did. L- luckiest bet of all time. First mm-hmm. off, I earned that. I earned that Browns win because I was on the Browns. When Kareem Hunt ran out of bounds, I was on the Browns <laughs> when they had that game winning touchdown a- yeah. against the Bengals and then missed the extra point for the cover. You know, I was on the Browns when they lateraled like five fucking times and it goes out of the end zone and they don't cover there. So I think all those Browns bad beats finally put together in this beat. And I, I was going back and forth with that. First off, the Browns lost their left tackle, who was already a backup. To begin with, on the first play of the game, which is pretty huge for that offense, and then that 
uh, that Higgins dive towards the end zone where he clearly that was gets the hit difference. in the head and then fumbles and then it doesn't roll out of bounds. Uh or it does roll out of bounds for a touchback. That's pretty bad luck. I think if they score that touchdown, I I was arguing that I think they still cover that 10 regardless if Mahomes plays that other half. I they I mean it wasn't they were having some success against Mahomes. It, it it was clear they had made some adjustments that were working. Yeah. So yeah, I mean you can say it's lucky because the Mahomes got knocked out of the game. That that's fair. Uh, but there there was at least five percent of everyone in this country that was like, oh well, he th- you know he does kind of play like an asshole. Who Mahomes? Oh. Like all of those all of those asshole like flary type things that he's done. He's flicking of the wrist and his underhand throws like. Eh, it, this was always bound to happen. He's been building up a little bit of that karma. So uh, to see him go out, I, I was a little bummed. I don't think it affected the game. Go ahead. And he came in and kind of he looked executed. pretty solid. I, obviously that, that, uh, that play he, or that interception he threw up for grabs, that wasn't amazing. But again, maybe that's just like a punt and they, and they take but, over on the 20 yard line. But this kind of game where the, the Browns come back from a like 14, 13, whatever point deficit to be within the 10 point window, that was always going to happen. The movement, yeah. the movement we saw Sunday morning, although it was scary, it always made sense because it was just a lot of points. And this Browns team was competent. And and kudos to Andy Reid. I mean that play call on fourth and one <laughs> onions where he uh, oh. Oh. where he lets Chad Henney go for it on fourth and one. You trust him enough to throw the ball. I mean kudos to him because that I, I did think they were actually going to just try and draw him off sides and then punt it away. But kudos to him. I mean Andy Reid. We've seen him. He had his run in in Philadelphia with a lot of like. Some interesting play calls, some conservative play calls, horrible clock management, but he's today, going out his way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and they've been super aggressive. I think that last uh, Super Bowl run last year really taught him of uh, taught him the lesson of just, hey, let's go out guns blazing. And I think they kind of got that underdog mentality going last year, even though they were the one seed, the underdog mentality because they kept falling behind in these yeah. games, even in the Super Bowl a conference championship game and and especially against the Texans. I mean, they were down 24 nothing. So I, I think they just kind of got in this uh, I don't know to, how to describe it completely, but this mode where they're just uh, hey, we realize there's no tomorrow, we're playing for today, all those cliche things and and super aggressive play calling to match it. Well, and I think w- this is Andy Reid, you know, probably doesn't get enough credit for. It. There there's clearly some sort of structure within this team. Uh, that allows there to be a ton of autonomy everywhere. And like, clearly they're playing for one another and you know, you want to give a re uh, uh, like an uh, extra motivation. Okay. We might not have our starter. Everyone else is heightened. So in, in a way I'm a little worried because this team is going to be focused. They're going to be hyper-focused on this bills team. And I don't know if anyone can beat Kansas city if they have Mahomes and they're hyper-focused. And quite frankly, like I like it. Like Andy Reid saying, "Fuck it, I'm gonna do it my way. If I'm gonna be wrong, I'm gonna be wrong trying, not being wrong, putting the ball like a pussy." Yeah, I mean, we, <laughs> I mean, like you know, we gave uh, you know we gave Tomlin and Vrabel a ton of shit, deservedly so, in the wild card round for punting away the game and uh, to win the game. Yeah, Sean. Andy Reid super aggressive, went for it as he should, converted, and uh, congrats, uh, congrats to the Kansas City Chiefs. Our friend uh, Alex, Kansas City Alex, said he was looking to he was going to call in. He didn't like all the disrespect that was be thro- being thrown out. I said uh, I said the Chiefs would win, the Browns would cover. That's what happened. I, I'm waiting for him to call in on the locker room app, Ryan. I, I was yeah I, yeah I, I took the the Browns on the money line. I was yeah. pretty close. That uh, that wasn't they a were, bad. They were they were live dog. A lot of value there, Sean. Yeah, it's a ten point dog. Uh, and, and they did cover the spread. So, but man, this Chiefs team just just they they just win games, Sean. They just win games. Couple interesting notes. Andy Reid becomes the first coach to host three straight conference championship games for two separate franchises. It's impressive. Yeah, I mean Andy Reid going down, you know, he he only had that the only thing really against his resume was no Super Bowl. Check that off. And uh now he's good to go. I mean, he's really climbing up the all-time coaches well, list. And especially and if he can add another Super Bowl to it. And how many coaches, I mean, doing it in multiple places 
How many times do you see that great college coach come in and and just completely fall on their face in the NFL or an NFL coach that had success somewhere else? Maybe that that, that kind of teetered off, and then you go somewhere else and you don't have all the pieces in place. I mean, you can't even say that about Belichick. You can't say that about even sure Saban won a national championship at LSU, I guess. But I, I, you know, Andy Reid. He's a really good coach and, and he doesn't get a ton of credit. For some reason, Eagle fan are completely fine with the fact that he left and they've sold themselves on the fact that it was time. I mean, th- this would irk me a little bit if I was a fan of a team that like kind of was okay with him leaving. I no, understand the circumstances have changed, but like, no, he's I mean, a good coach. In, and look what he's the, doing. In the moment, the team bottomed out. He was clearly burned out in no, Philadelphia. I, I it was it was a perfect change of scenery and it was the right move. It led them eventually to winning their first <laughs> it's Super Bowl. It's so. true. It's hard to argue through, with the results through the, through the swamp of Chip Kelly. Yeah, we had a little detour <laughs> with Chip Kelly, and then uh, Doug P brought it home, and now now we're searching for a new head coach to uh, come back and and bring another Super Bowl. And and certainly the city of Philadelphia has a ton of respect and admiration for Andy Reid, and the fact that he's doing it in the AFC is I, I think makes it easier. If he was in the NFC East, certainly that would be pretty <laughs> crazy. Or doing it yeah. dominating in the NFC, I think it would be a little more. Um, Contentious, but yeah, uh, he's like. You saying he went to the JV? Uh, well, no, I mean, <laughs> it's like, like we've we've moved on. You know, it's like I mean, that. It's like the first marriage. He's moved on. He's got a new family. He's happy. We got a new family. Things are a little bit tumultuous, yeah. but we had a we we got our Super Bowl, so we we're the, good. The NFC East was pretty crappy this year. I mean, just just for the record, if we're being introspective and, and all. Yeah. What is, what do you mean by that? Oh, I mean, you were, you were trying to, you were kind of alluding to the fact that it was more difficult to do it in the AFC. No, no. Okay. No, I'm saying the fact that he was doing it in the AFC makes it less painful for him to be successful. If he was winning in, if he was coaching the Washington football team, (laughs) that would make it way more harder on Eagles fans. Uh, Sure. You're right. It's still tough. It's still gotta be tough. That's all I'm saying. No. Okay. It doesn't. I it's, mean, I Eagles mean, I, fans are not bothered by Andy Reid's success. You're the only I, I'm, one. I'm saying that's bothered it, I'm, by. I'm not. Yeah, I'm saying it would be tough if I was in that situation. That's all. I'm not trying to say you should feel that way, Sean. Okay. Yeah. Someone, uh, I guess, asked Chad Henny if he is aware. Hashtag Henny thing is possible was trending on social <laughs> media. Henny said he'd. Uh, that's only, a great slogan. He'd only be aware if it was on LinkedIn. So he's not on <laughs> traditional social media. He is a Michigan man, Sean. He is the he's most a private man. of public school pussies. Exactly. D- double win for the Michigan man. Yeah. Today. Good day. Uh, good day for Michigan men in general, <laughs> moving to the last game, Tampa Bay bucks, 30 saints, 20. I obviously was on the Bucks. We picked it at three and a half. Yeah. So that three and a half never really felt that bad. I mean, New Orleans got out to a little bit, a little bit of a lead there early. We it was the the funniest moment in the game was we, we were sitting on the couch and just kind of seeing Drew Brees not be able to throw the ball downfield and we were talking about Jameis and the idea he might go in and do something put up the poll question of will Jameis Winston throw a touchdown pass this Nailed is like that. seven minutes ten minutes before he's <laughs> made an appearance in the game that they bring t- in Alvin Kamara he's at the wild you know he's running the wildcat. <laughs> And then this crazy trick play where he hits a dude wide open for a touchdown pass. How do you not give him more throws in that game? He was clearly able to throw it 20 yards. Sean, that was the longest passing touchdown of the season for the saints. This was not a team that could go downfield. And I, (laughs) you know, I I get it. This was his last hurrah, but for this was what blew my mind. Drew Brees is like a year and a half younger than Brady. And Breeze just like I know that we saw Manning fall off the wagon, but the, from the start of the year to now, he just completely fallen off. And maybe it was when he got like eighteen ribs broken, but <laughs> he he look. I mean, he looks like he needs to be taken out back and put down and sent off to the farm or cremated, whatever you want to do with your pet. Maybe throw him in, you know, maybe have him uh, take him to the taxidermy, have a stuffed Drew up on your mantle. <laughs> Richard uh, Gertzberger having a making a couple of good points in the YouTube chat. One making fun of you for drinking a Lacroix live on the show. <laughs> Thank you. Other one saying the oldest starting quarterback in the AFC was Baker Mayfield at 25 years, oh. and then the NFC starters were <laughs> age 43, 40, 36, and Goff, who I I don't know if he, um, I don't I'm pretty sure he no longer qualifies as a starting quarterback. But yeah, crazy age discrepancy <laughs> and. 
and maybe they just go Jamison Winston Ryan, as I like to call him. Why I, not? Well, I mean, they have Taysom Hill. They're paying Taysom Hill <laughs> ten Listen, million dollars. I mean, it, they were fortunate enough to to be able to get Winston first round talent. I mean, they figured out that he needed LASIK surgery, <laughs> probably a good thing. And and we saw the upside of of Winston. It's just the mental stuff. And if Peyton believes that he's you know he's a genius, he can fix that. So yeah, I if I'm Peyton, I'm you know I'm I'm okay with Breeze you know moseying out of town, and maybe I run a little two quarterback look next year with uh, Jameis and Taysom. The absolute yin and yang in terms of people on the field and off the field. This was a fun nugget. That was the first career playoff touchdown pass for Jameis Winston and the first playoff touchdown pass <laughs> thrown for the Saints by someone other than Drew Brees since Aaron Brooks threw two in the division round oh, of 2000. Shit. Another fun stat was this is the first time a uh, basically the first time someone's thrown their first. NFL playoff touchdown pass as a first round quarterback against the team that drafted them. Little, a uh, little revenge factor there for Jameis. Almost. I think if they, if Jameis, everyone wants to see Jameis play. Whatever it is, he's exciting. He's interesting. He's bit of a, he's a bit of a character. I, I think we're all better off seeing more Jameis Winston if, in our life. If they put him in the game, they have a chance to win. They, yeah. Do you? I mean, they couldn't. I mean, at least he's going to throw it. Down. Look. Breeze threw two interceptions. Winston can at a minimum throw two interceptions. Let, but at least he's going to go down the field trying something. I just, I mean, you saw the way Tampa was playing defense. They knew Breeze couldn't throw the ball more than fifteen yards down the field. Yeah, and they really. Uh, and that's that. The the Saints had a little bit of a game plan going early, and then they they really they really got away from it, and and Tampa Bay just kind of figured them out. Oh, and and on cue, we uh, Mr. Alex Crouch is Alex here, Sean. Crouch. You probably guys here talking about working out, betting on the Chiefs. <laughs> What's happening, Alex? Okay, all right. Uh, so I did not. I, I just got back from my friend's house where we we're watching the games. I didn't hear anything that you guys said about the game in the first place. So uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't like know how much I can really. <laughs> no, we were just combat I, the things that I wanted to combat. I, I, I think we we were just saying. We thought this would be a, uh, a good game. I again, I said the Chiefs would win, Browns would cover. That's what happened. I felt pretty good about my position. It'll be interesting <laughs> to see if a Chad Henney is the starter next week. But uh, obviously, very complimentary about Andy Reid and the Onions play going for it on fourth and short there to ice the game. If Henny's starting, how confident are you? If Henny start, uh, Henny's not going to start, so we don't need to worry about that. It's going to be Pat. He's going to be back. I'll tell you something, boys. They tried to steal it from us today. Okay, I saw we were up big in a landslide at the beginning, and then they tried to <laughs> truck in all these Browns points late in the Stop third the quarter, steal. thinking I wasn't going to notice, <laughs> trying to steal the game from us. Uh, look, <laughs> we don't stand for that shit. We did. We didn't let them start. We stopped the steal. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm drunk. Hey, that's all right. Your team's in the AFC championship. Congrats, yeah. Alex. And uh, kudos to the chiefs. Hey, it should be a great game. I think this is the AFC championship. Everyone wanted to see bills, chiefs Sunday should be a great game yeah. and apologies ahead of time for betting against the chiefs. <laughs> We'll see. We'll nah, see. You're fine. You're fine. I mean, look, <laughs> have we covered in the last Eight games. It's no. been a while. What November? No, November first, laying twenty points, which is insane. That was the last time the Chiefs covered, and they keep making these double-digit spreads uh, against other teams. It really seems to be tied to Mitchell Schwartz. So I don't know if he, you know, his brother yeah, hosts this- a gambling <laughs> podcast. I don't know if there's any sort of inside information being <laughs> passed between the Schwartz this, brothers. This interior offensive line is dog shit. It's tied for the worst in the league and run blocking. And the only reason the pass blocking looks decent is because Pat's able to get rid of the ball quick and, you know, move around and not get sacked. But this this offensive offensive line is dog shit. This team's way worse than everybody thinks it is. It's literally just Pat and Kelsey and Hill and the defense kind of sucks. And, uh, but you know what? We make it work. We put it together. (laughs) We come in. We're uh, an honest, 
hardworking group out here. We don't get hung over. I'm not going to be hung over tomorrow. Um, now, are you going to be drinking some Pedialyte to get ahead of it, or are you just you're just you've conditioned your brain to a certain amount of alcohol? No, it's the water here in Casey. No one gets hung over. <laughs> no Super Bowl hangover for the Chiefs or for Alex. Alex, appreciate you calling in. Uh, best of luck next week. Cheers, bro. Yeah. Ah, uh, Kramer. We got a whole week of breaking down these games. It's going to be so uh, I'm looking forward to it. Two games, only, only two games. games left, man. Three games left. Get a little sad, but there's so much action going on gambling wise, NBA wise. We're going to be joined by uh, NBA NBA gambling podcast co-host Zach in just a second here, but want to give a shout out to better than Vegas. That's right. All you got to do, go to sports gambling podcast.com slash BTV sports gambling podcast.com slash BTV subscribe to our page, our profile better than Vegas. That's where you go. We get, we're giving out video picks. It's much like YouTube, but YouTube for sports gambling, check them out, sign up, create your own profile, put out your own video picks, follow our picks, all good times over at better than Vegas. Joining us on the line. Like I said, co-host of the NBA gambling podcast, Mr. Zach B Zach. What's happening, man? What's good, guys? Can you hear me? Oh yep. yeah, can hear you loud. Right, here we go. I, I'm a, a big fan of locker room, so happy to be joining. It was a great day of football. So uh, yeah, you got you got. We, we can watch the Knicks at noon tomorrow to nurse off that hangover <laughs> for anybody who uh, drank too much today. And I saw that for those who did lose a little back uh, when the Bucks won and covered. Uh, the Knicks have just been machines. Uh, ATS uh, looking like we're going to get to the window real quick on that season one too, but. Uh, yeah, they're the first game. Lo- love that all day basketball, Sean. Yeah, Not- we're we're gonna get to uh, a bunch of uh, a bunch of picks against the spread, but want to want to hit on a couple of big picture stuff. We haven't uh, we haven't talked basketball on here in a little bit. First off, let's talk let's talk Harden trade. He's going to Brooklyn. Can this work? I think I know Kramer and I were on the under for <laughs> Brooklyn. Uh, as far as the win total was concerned, because we just thought this dynamic with Kyrie, red flags, warning as predicted, <laughs> Kyrie would be doing some crazy shit. Unclear of when he's going to be rejoining the team. A lot of wild stuff going on, but then Harden comes in, and so far the basketball, uh, you know, they're winning some games here. What's your what's your early thoughts on the Harden trade? Yeah, I'm a fan of for Brooklyn. Definitely, there's the availability question with Kyrie that will. Uh, you know, obviously loom over the rest of the season. So they look like a good team, even with two stars in Harden and KD. So I, it's kind of an insurance move, I think more than anything, but um, yeah, they're going to be really good offensively. Obviously huge game tomorrow against the bucks. That'll be their first real primetime test. Kyrie's questionable for that game. Um, but yeah, I'm a fan of this trade for Brooklyn. I think uh, as long as these guys continue to be bought in, which is a big if, um, this offense can be really unstoppable. And, and the element of Joe Harris is just the, one of the best shooters in the NBA spacing out for these guys is very underrated in my opinion. Yeah. I mean uh, uh, yeah, from what I've seen so far and what, I, I mean, I've seen the photos on social media. There was, there was the photo of thick Harden, and he's just the guts out in the, when he's in the uh, Houston warmups. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he goes to Brooklyn he must have lost some weight, but was he intentionally wearing a fat suit? A lot yes. of conspiracy theories. What was going yes. on from thick Harden to now? How he looks back to normal. Apparently, he was warming up with a heating pad like over his core muscles mm. um, that that allowed him to look big. But <laughs> honestly, look, I mean, from his perspective, he he got what he wanted out of the situation. He yeah. forced his way to the team he wanted, so it does kind of you know continue the concerns of the player empowerment era with you know he was able to do it and he got exactly what he wanted out of it. Obviously um, Houston looks to be better for it too. So um, definitely a very interesting trade here. Now what's your take on, on my Sixers? Did they, did they mess up by not pulling off the, uh, off the trade? I think, yes. I mean, I think it's, it's a shame that Ben Simmons still hasn't really raised his ceiling. I don't think the, you know, the whole image this off season of Ben Simmons taking that leap as a ball handler um, <laughs> and scorer hasn't really, hasn't really borne out. So, I mean, the East is really, really bunched up right now. I mean, you were, you were talking about the Brooklyn win total. I mean, you're off to a good start with that under they're only eight and six, but it feels like they're right in the thick of things. 
obviously Milwaukee in first at nine and four, but really in both conferences, no one's running away with it. So I think you're going to see, you know, these big win totals going under, or at least look so far that way. Kramer, what are your, what are your thoughts on the Harden trade? Uh, I mean, f- first of all, I th- even if you had a pad, I, I mean, we're, <laughs> it, it was it was like uh, like an Eddie Murphy movie. It, it was a clear. It's a different person. I mean, he yeah. looks lean, and ne- maybe it's the black. <laughs> it's slimming. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I think uh, it's intriguing. I mean, my my entire life, uh, with the exception of a couple of years when Jason Kidd and Vince Carter made it interesting, the Nets have been a loser franchise, uh, and they were the loser franchise that went to Brooklyn to try to be cool and hip like the Knicks. Uh, and now they have the best team. They have the best roster. And I, I like James Harden. I've always liked James Harden. And I think Me Durant too. regrets whatever went down in, in Oklahoma city that, that had Harden be the guy that got traded away. I think Durant always regretted that he's like this thoughtful guy. Right. And he, and he realized that he picked the wrong guy. He was short-sighted and young picking Westbrook and not Harden. <laughs> Harden is more of that. He Harden is more of the complimentary artiste that he needs to play with. And so, yeah, I like. I mean, I, but any team with Kyrie, they just need to get rid of Kyrie. Yeah, I like Nash so, too. Someone like, was, someone you just got to get rid of Kyrie. Like, someone was throwing uh, trading Kyrie uh, to the Wizards and and getting uh, Westbrook back and getting the band back together. That would be uh, <laughs> that would be pretty hilarious. Where I, so now do we just lock up the Nets to win the East? Because really, in the playoffs, that's when it's going to matter. And certainly Harden has a big asterisk next to his name because he just hasn't really done much in the playoffs. We were at that game Kramer when, oh. when uh, who was it on the, who was it on the rockets that came back? It was some uh, I'm blanking who was involved on the, on the comeback, but they basically came back with Harden on the bench and the Clippers totally blew that lead. And then he ran, helped run uh, Kevin McHale out of town as a coach. And he just really hasn't had some consistent playoff performances at, at some the point big stage. you got to pay, you know, at some point you got to pay the bill, but now maybe this is the perfect situation for Harden because Durant can be the, the big boy. He can be the number one Harden can kind of be, you know, the sidekick on steroids and, and kind of hang off his coattails, hit some shots when they need to. Are, are we just penciling in the, the nets to win the East? Or do you think they'll actually have some real issues in the playoffs? And I, I believe you were referring to uh, Josh J. Smooth Smith yes, with, with, regard right. to that, with regard to that Rockets comeback. Um, great player. <laughs> I, I think with, with the Eastern Conference, I, I like the Nets. I'm, I don't have the odds in front of me right now. Um, I'm still pretty bearish on this Bucks team. Don't really trust them. And you've seen, I think you see this clump of kind of slightly above average, but nothing special with Boston, Indiana, Philly. Um, and then obviously Toronto Kramer, we're, we're really hurting on that win total over so far. So, oh, so we're going to talk, <laughs> talk about them later, but yeah, I would make Brooklyn the favorite in the East right now. All right, let's uh, let's get to it and actually start picking some gains against the spread before we do I want to shout out ACE per head thinking about starting your own online sports book. You can do it. All you gotta do is go to aceperhead.com slash SGP aceperhead.com slash SGP ACE is the place. You're thinking about starting your own online sports book. Again, they come up with the lines. They grade the wagers. They do all the heavy lifting for you. Mobile wagering in game wagering ACE is the place. If you're thinking about starting your own online sports book, MLK day, there's a full slate. I know you got you and uh, rich fat baby McKee did a deep dive, but thought it'd be good. Uh, fun. Have you guys on here. Talk some of the, uh, some of the bigger games tomorrow. MLK Day NBA Orlando Magic laying one and a half at the Knicks Kramer are we just riding the Knicks here Yes we discussed the reasons why this Knicks team is showing up to play every day and and, and I think you know uh, t- I I don't know t- Tibbs is just he's he's doing exactly <laughs> what we thought he's going to do which is he's going to drive the team hard and they're going to they're going to play the play a system yeah, and, no, and they're delivering results right now. I mean, what what were they today? Uh, Two fifty on the money line. Uh, I mean, they're they're just getting you to the window. So let's 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 ride a gravy train. No, I'm with you. And we kind of, you know, Zach had that angle, and we we talked about in the preseason win totals. Of just Tibbs is just going to play these guys super hard, and that's why it's great for regular season win total, and why it's great to take them as a you know small home dog here catching one and a half against the magic 
with the, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I like the spot here for the Knicks. Also, there uh, and the the times I have dabbled in the NBA, and, and I'll let Zach talk because he he knows more than us. But uh, I have been just going with the hard contrarian angle. Uh, Rich Fat Baby McKee is upset with me because last time <laughs> I popped in the locker room, I went five and zero oh, just being contrarian. When I look at the <laughs> tomorrow, what do I see? I see a pretty big uh, a pretty big split with the favor uh, with the Magic getting two thirds of the money. So well, and in general, the dogs have just been live all around because uh, no home court. They really haven't quite adjusted as much as they probably should have. Zach, are you with us on on the Knicks here tomorrow against the Magic? Yeah, definitely think this is a great spot for the Knicks. I, uh, obviously, with Tibbs, you know, playing these guys so many minutes, that that thirty point win <laughs> against the Celtics actually afforded them to get some like lighter than normal uh, loads. You know, you had R.J. Barrett, Mitchell Robinson, both under thirty minutes today. So should be a, they'll be decently rested. And the Magic are in free fall right now. Uh, ton of injuries. You know, about a seven or eight man deep injury report. Uh, you know, lost five straight here coming to New York against the team that, like we said, has been hungry all year. So definitely like the Knicks at this uh, short line. Here's another one. Pretty interesting game. Dallas, the Mavs head up to, uh, well, I was going to say Canada, but uh, they're the, uh, they're the Tampa Bay Raptors, right? Is that yep, where, is Toronto, right. Toronto, AKA Tampa Bay Raptors. Raptors are a four point favorite against the Mavs. What's the, what's the lean here, Zach? Yeah, I like Dallas here actually, and I, I know I'm I'm kind of off this Raptors team now after they were my uh, win total over. They 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 really just you know they they've looked like they've kind of taken that leap downwards. Um, but yeah, you know the Raptors have kind of been they've been like the uh, I guess like the Chiefs of the NBA whatever with these wins without covering against bad teams. They haven't really beaten a good team yet this year. Um, Porzingis, Luca back, Dallas getting some guys back off COVID. I like this uh, spot for the Mavs. Yeah, Raptors right now this season three and nine against the spread. Meanwhile, Mavs seven and five against the spread. Like you said, getting some guys back, finding a little bit of a mojo overall, and they're getting points. Uh, and it just feels like there's no home court. I, I'm with you. I think I think Dallas plus four is a good play, and and certainly a live dog here. We mentioned the angle of making sure we were looking into the effect of playing NBA games in Tampa, a well known. <laughs> Strip club city. Perhaps we should have looked at the team itself. <laughs> That's in Tampa. Per- perhaps they're they're hitting it a bit too hard. Three and nine is pretty impressive. That that tells me the market's just off. So until the market corrects itself, I think you just have to fade Toronto. Yeah, no, I I think that's a good spot. It's minus four feels a bit high for them. This should be uh, one of the big games. Milwaukee Bucks laying two and a half in Brooklyn against the Nets, which we just started hitting on. I like this. I like this Nets team, especially in prime time. Regardless of whether Kyrie plays, I think they're a live dog. I think Harden and Durant. You know, in the regular season NBA, for me, when I do dabble uh, getting down on some of these games, it's about finding that motivation. Yeah. And I think on a big stage like this, uh, they'll they'll be amped up for this game. I think they match up well a- against Milwaukee overall. And I, I don't know. I, I think they're you know. I think Harden's going to be coming out shooting well. I, I don't see why he shouldn't be able to get his shots. And I look for Durant to have a big game. Where are you at with this game, Zach? Yeah, I'm right with you. I like the, the Nets here as a home dog. I think um, big spot motivationally, and you know, I think Milwaukee. I see have them as two and four against spread on the road this year. Um, and yeah, that's the personnel matchup. I mean, the, you have three great isolation scores that'll test the. Uh, you know, really conservative nature of the Bucks defense, and they don't have the you know personnel to match up with all three of these guys. So I like the Nets here catching points at home. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they're they're look, it's chalky. It's very chalky to take the Nets here, but you nailed it, right? Like the James Harden is the exact kind of player that's going to put a little bit more focus Prime. and effort. Knowing they're the only show in town, Sean. Yeah, so. no, this is a perfect James Harden spot. Prime <laughs> time, big lights, yeah. regular season. Yeah. It's not the playoffs. It's not. Uh, it's not like Game Six of a must-win game. It's a um, look, you know, uh, nationally televised big slate game where you can show s- off, but still be playing up against regular season defense. I get it. It's fun. It it, it feels it feels too obvious. Feels very obvious. You think? Danger, I mean, danger. It, they are making Milwaukee a road favorite, so hopefully, yeah, I mean, hopefully, the public isn't back in uh, back in the nets here too they, hard. They are buying the the fake skinny James Harden. <laughs> it was Photoshop. 
San Antonio Spurs laying one and a half in Portland, Portland. I I, I just saw the, uh, the money split here, Portland, one and a half point dog getting a ton of action. 68% right now. I'm seeing that number over at odds shark. Now the Spurs again, I, I think we were pretty much all over them in the win total saying they were, they were undervalued seven and six so far. But that you know, their total was so low, they're they're well on pace eight, eight and five, five. Yeah, there you go. against the spread. I don't know. I, I want to take the Spurs here just because the public seems to be back in the Blazers. But other than that, I, I don't have a lot of good reasons. Zach, what are you doing here? Yeah, uh, obviously for the Blazers starts with uh, the injury report here. Nurkic fractured wrist; he'll be out for a while. CJ McCollum's also out, so that's that kind of explains why the the Spurs are favored here. Um, I would probably lean Spurs here. Uh, I like their, they have a lot of good options to throw at Dame and Dame will really be the main offensive weapon for the Blazers, uh, tomorrow night with all these guys out. So I would lean Spurs here, but, um, definitely kind of a sketchy spot. I would say, and this is a weird, like, I mean, this is like an early start time on the West coast, right? 12, 12 o'clock. Yeah. 3 PM Eastern. So, yeah. so it, it, you know, I don't know if that's, if, if that's going to create any weird body clock situations. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I would imagine if any franchise is going to be ahead of that, it's the Spurs. Yeah. I feel like Portland probably has some good wine bars. Maybe pop goes out, <laughs> has, has a couple of pops. I could see him not being completely focused. And uh, again, if you haven't seen Popovich, a big Portland, <laughs> I don't know if he, I don't know if he still has that long beard, but the there was like a crazy ass photo of him jumping up and down. They caught him mid air with the mask <laughs> on and his giant beard and hair, like gray, crazy ass hair and beard flying in the air. I'm just picture it's a terrifying uh, photo. I'm just picturing him wandering around Portland on a unicycle with a big <laughs> cauldron of wine, <laughs> doing some, doing some flights there. Quick sidebar there. You mentioned CJ McCollum. I'm trying down to track, uh, trying to track down a CJ McCollum. Lehigh Jersey. If anyone knows a lead on mm. it, I'm willing to pay for it. I found one of these. <laughs> I think it's like one of those Chinese Jersey places that has them. It takes offshore the offshore. Yeah. It takes, I think they said <laughs> four to six weeks. So I'm what? trying not to go there. I'd rather buy directly and maybe there's, maybe there's someone that has one or, or knows a guy. So if you got an inside Iggy on a CJ McCollum Lehigh jersey, please, <laughs> please contact me. I'm trying Le- to get one. If you got a Lehigh jersey guy, yeah. Well, you never know. It's it's the. Do they even right? make those for for fans to buy? No. So I think what it is <laughs> is it's that whole thing where they probably stopped making them because now you have to pay the players the licensing oh, fee. I think it has something to do with that because you go to the Lehigh store and it's just it's just the generic ones. Also, they probably don't have anyone. Uh, that's amazing. One of the final games will break down golden state at the Lakers Lakers minus nine. We're seeing right now, LeBron James. I I think I saw he's questionable right now. What's your, what's your take on this game, Zach? Yeah. I mean, the Lakers are kind of quietly hitting their stride here. I think they have three or four straight double digit victories. Um, I like the Lakers here. Obviously it's a big number, but um, they kind of have the size and length to overwhelm this, this warriors team. They've been playing better. Um, but um, Lakers have been good in the spot as a home favorite. And I think they'll, they'll really, the, the warriors won't have an answer for LeBron and AD Draymond can only do so much there. Yeah. I mean, I, again, it, it's, I, I, I mentioned it earlier, but I came in the last time to be a little bit more contrarian. Uh, Lakers is another chalky side that I like. I I'm okay. Laying, laying these points. I, as you stated, I, I think I think the uh, AD is just going to be too much, and uh, you know Draymond just just a fun guy to bet against as well. No, and and for me again, it's all about uh, finding finding these spots where motivation matters. And I think since this is a primetime game, a big game, big slate, I think the Lakers and LeBron and AD should be good to go as long as he's a hundred percent physically or close enough. And I and I have a feeling he's going to play whatever he's whatever he's dealing with. He'll try and play through. So yeah, I like this spot again. I don't see how they can really handle this Lakers offense with, with LeBron and AD Zach, what are we looking forward to uh, rest of the season? Any, any big trends emerging, anything you're keeping your eye on over at the NBA gambling podcast? Um, you put me in the spot here. I mean, I, I think this jazz team um, I'm very intrigued by them. That, that's one thing I'm looking at is potentially a team that could get into this upper echelon of uh, contenders. 
uh, five straight wins right now. I think Kramer, you were also with me on them as a win total lock in the Western conference. I see them emerging into the elite team conversation here. And it is one of those situations where that, you know, still possibly have some form of home court just based on the, that secret elevation. We always talk about Sean. Oh yeah. Secret elevation. All right. Uh, championship games are set. Zach, any, uh, any thoughts there? Conference championship, AFC, NFC. What do you, have you, uh, have you got down on the super bowl or conference championship going into the super bowl at all? Uh, not yet, but I, I will say there was a lot of Jared Goff slander this week. Uh, it was it was tough to hear. I, I honestly did. I, I thought he didn't play that badly. No, um, it, he he actually kind of low key played well enough for the win that game. Defense wasn't as good as it was hard, uh, chalked up yeah, to be. It's true. Um, but you know, Jared Goff is, is my fa- my favorite quarterback for uh, the DJs only out there to know. Um, <laughs> and so I, I, I'll go with uh, Packers Chiefs. Obviously, that's a chalk side, but. Uh, now, that should be a great Super Bowl if it happens. I'm blanking. Why do you like Jared Goff? I, I, I going back to the Elite Eleven days. I just kind of, <laughs> you know, just been a huge fan of that of that, that arm talent vibe. <laughs> uh, just everything, everything about him. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I love Garrett, I love giving Jared Goff shit, but <laughs> I, we even even on the uh, on the recap show, I said he played much better. Then, then we were predicting he still went way under the yardage total, or at least comfortably under. But they did everything they had to do. I felt like on the offensive side of the ball to be in that game, all things considered, it really was the Rams' defense just not being able to slow down the Packers at all to keep them in that game. Yeah, I mean, when when, when Jared Goff plays turnover-free football on the road, that's kind of what it's all about. No, and, we, and we were throwing out the the, the couple stats of him. Yeah in like sub 30 weather, but he, his stats were good. Like he, he had good ball placement. I, I felt like he saw the, the field. Well, it just wasn't enough to, to stop this Packers team, which just seems unbeatable right now. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, Zach, thanks for calling in. Make sure you check out Zach on Twitter at NBA Zach B. Make sure you subscribe to the NBA gambling podcast. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast. Kramer. You ready for a conference championship week? Let's I, go, I, baby. I'm, I'm very, I mean, we're both kind of on, on heaters right now. We're, we're on heaters. Let's hopefully it, uh, finish strong. Got a big week of uh, shows and content. Give us a uh, five-star review merch Monday. We're picking a winner, a different winner every Monday, uh, picking a review and hooking them up with some merch for the sports gaming podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green. And he is Ryan. Just got a message from coach judge, Zach, go run some laps for liking Jared Goff. All rise (laughs) Kramer. Let it ride.